Psalm 148. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise ye him all his hosts. Praise ye him sun and moon. Praise him all ye stars of light. Praise him ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He has also established them forever and ever. He hath made a decree which shall not pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his words. Mountains and all hills, fruitful trees and all cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth, both young men and maidens, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Our lesson background introduces the Psalms as a whole to be a collection of five books. When examining these five, one notices the predominance of Lamet in books one and two. David wrote about three quarters of their 72 Psalms and he had much to reflect on regarding the conduct of his life. Moving beyond the problem of exile in book three, we begin to notice more expression of praise in books four and five. No matter what the problem, God is king. Psalms 96 through 99 in book four. And he will one day make all things right. Psalm 145 in book five. These facts call for praise on the part of the psalmist. Psalm 148 in today's text is one of the five chapters known collectively as the praise conclusion to the book of Psalms as a whole. Each of the five, that is Psalms 46 through Psalm 150, begins and ends with the Hebrew word hallelujah, which is translated praise ye the Lord. The five chapters of Psalms 146 through 150 offer different emphasis in regard to praise that should be offered. How unbelievers can study the cosmos and not see the creator behind it is amazing. The sad tendency instead is to rejoice and celebrate human achievement in unlocking the mysteries of the universe. This is otherwise known as human arrogance or pride, a form of idolatry. The price of arrogance can be quite high, as at least one ancient king found out the hard way. Daniel, the fourth chapter. Psalm 148 teaches a better way. There is a creator of the universe and he is worthy of praise by all. A word occurring 10 times in the Psalms, 14 verses. The creator has revealed himself in both creation through general revelation and scripture, special revelation. Jesus Christ is God's ultimate revealing of himself. John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 14, and John, the 14th chapter, verses 9. Hebrews, the first chapter, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, how sad it is when the only part of creation that does not acknowledge its creator is the part created 
in the image of God. How startling to resist Jesus, the one who has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. We can find this in Ephesians, the first chapter and the fourth verse. The one by whom were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Colossians, the first chapter in the 16th verse. Before we can begin an evangelistic task of Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 19 and 20, we do well to ponder what unbelievers see in us. Do they see lives filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God? Philippians, the first chapter and the 11th verse. Or do they see lives lived in praise of self? Only a people near to God can convince a fallen world that it needs to repent as it returns to its creator, Jesus Christ. Our task to praise is also our witness. Father God, in the name of Jesus, you are the creator of heaven and earth. We praise your name above all names. We worship not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N, in whom all things were created and by whom we are new creations. May we, by your strength, live our very lives in praise of these facts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go.